Hi everyone, and welcome to the fifth episode of Battles in History. In this episode I will be talking about the Spring Offensive, a combination of attacks and battles during the First World War. I hope you enjoy it, and if you did, please click the like button and leave a comment of what battle you want me to cover in a next episode. Enjoy! The Spring Offensive, or Kaiserschlacht, was a combination of attacks of the German army during World War I during the spring and summer of 1918, from 21st of March until 18th of July, and it took place in Belgium and northern France. After the Russian collapse in 1917, the Germans wanted a decisive victory at the Western Front, before the Americans were able to build a significant force there. This would push the Germans to try it one last time, this time with a new tactic. On the one side, we have the Allied troops, consisting of the United Kingdom, France, the United States and even some troops of Portugal. The Allied troops were under command of Ferdinand Foch, Douglas Haig, Philippe Pétain and John Pershing. On the other side, we have the German troops, which were all under command of Erich Ludendorff. In 1917, the situation for Germany was becoming more and more problematic. First of all, the attempt to defeat the Allied troops with U-boats resulted in a declaration of war from the United States. Along with that, the other states of the Central Powers, consisting of Austria-Hungary, the Ottoman Empire and Bulgaria, were not gaining much without German help. And, last of all, the Western Front was still stuck. The German economy and food situation was also under heavy stress because of the British blockade. The Russian Revolution, however, was a welcome surprise for the Germans. Russia had to sign the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk, which ended Russia's participation in World War I. This made it so that Germany could send a great number of troops from the Eastern Front to the Western Front. General Erich Ludendorff wanted to separate the French and British soldiers with a combination of attacks, after which the British troops would basically be pushed towards the sea. Ludendorff thought that, if he could manage this, the French power would quickly cease to be, and the Americans would think again about sending help to the Allied troops. Ludendorff planned a couple offensives which would make part of Operation Michael, the military name for the Spring Offensive. They were as follows. Mars, an offensive against the British and French troops at the Somme and Arras. This was meant to divide the two forces. Georgette, an offensive in the north against the British and Belgian troops. Blücher York, an offensive against the French at Quemain des Dames. And lastly, Friedensturm, an offensive against the French towards the Marne and Paris. Ludendorff knew that blindly attacking would basically equal suicide. Therefore, he changed his tactic. First of all, he chose for the so-called Brugmüller tactic, an artillery fire before the offensive lasting five hours in different phases. This was mainly because the traditional days-long bombardments would ruin the surprise. Under cover of the artillery fire, the units of the stormtroopers, or Stosstruppen, which were an elite force of Germany equipped with automatic rifles and flamethrowers, charged forward to gain control of the British artillery line behind the British front lines as fast as possible. The regular infantry would take care of the other big support points. On March 21st, 1918, the first attack started. The offensives were successful at first. The Allied trench lines were breaking, making the Germans able to march forth. In just two days, the British lines at the Somme were broken, letting the Germans march on 25 kilometers. General Haig, the British commander, called for reinforcements, but the French troops were also attacked at Paris and Philippe Pétain thought it was more important to defend the capital. The Germans, however, did not gain an advantage. Yes, they were able to march on fairly quickly and successfully, but because of this, they were stepping out of the line of their own artillery support. On top of that, they had to march over the old battlefield of the Somme. The old trenches were still there, filled with landmines, barbed wire and mud. Along with that, a lot of soldiers were underfed, causing them to be quite quickly distracted. When they found a food depot, then the soldiers would plunder this instead of marching on. The British forces regrouped and defended against the German attack on Arras, and on 28th of March, 1918, the front line of Germany was solid again. Ludendorff already claimed his victory. After all, the German Emperor and a lot of Germans believed in him. The Germans did what the Allied forces couldn't do in three years. 
break the trench lines. However, this was a false victory. The British may have lost quite some ground and material, but they still had a solid, closed front. The areas captured by the Germans had no strategic value whatsoever, even though they cost a lot of ammunition and lives. On top of this, there was an ammunition shortage. Blinded by this so-called success, Ludendorff continued Operation Michael and opened more offensives. The other offensives, however, also were to no strategic purposes. These new offensives had the same strategy. At the Second Battle of the Marne, the French stopped the Germans because of the French soldiers standing their ground and giving their everything, along with the before-named problems Germany faced. The offensives in Belgium and near Reims also came to a halt. Quite often, the failure of Operation Michael is blamed on the fact that the Americans came to support the Allied troops. In reality, however, the American troops were still grouping up and building their army, and were still short of materials. In fact, because of this, they didn't even fight under the American flag at first. There were American soldiers that fought, but under British or French divisions. Even artillery had to be borrowed, as they did not have this. The participation of America did have some psychologic values, however. The Germans saw the threat of a nation with 100 million citizens, along with thousands of factories that could produce tens of thousands of cannons within no time. America also had one of the biggest navy of the world. Ludendorff knew that time was not in his advantage, causing him to plan the spring offensive so that the British and French soldiers would have been defeated before the Americans were ready for battle. Quickly, the French forces started a counterattack, and shortly after that, the British forces as well. The conquered terrain was lost, they also learned from previous battles and reformed their strategy. Their strategy was similar to the German strategy, but with the difference that the infantry would not step out of the reach of the artillery. Along with this, their pattern of attack changed. First, they would disable the enemy cannons with their artillery, then they would kill enemy cannoneers with mustard gas. The Germans were pushed back further and further. On August 8th, 1918, the Allied forces launched a massive attack with 400 tanks. Ludendorff called this a black day for the German army. The counterattack was fatal for the Germans. They lost more and more terrain along with morale. The spring offensive was, after all, a gamble for Ludendorff, which he most clearly lost. The counterattack, along with the blockades and the loss of allies, were some of the main causes for the German Revolution of November 1918. Ludendorff, however, blamed the left Republican government, because of which the stab in the back myth was born. Shortly put, it was believed that the Germans did not lose World War I on the battlefield, but that they were betrayed by the civilians on the home front, especially Jews and Republicans. The believers of this myth denounced the leaders of the German government who signed the armistice on November 11, 1918, as the November criminals, or Novemberverbrecher. If you like this video, please leave a comment, like the video and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future.